sure you remember the advertisement of this Game Boy kid, uh, adult, smacking over his d colors. Well, I had a Game Boy, and it was a great machine. Nothing wrong with it at all, except colors. I wanted them colors so badly. In the end, I borrowed a Game Gear from a friend, and the batteries lasted for 10 minutes. Using the interwebs, we can check out the Argos catalog of 1993. We can flick through. Oh, remember the days checking out these. Uh. Yeah, the. Oh. Yeah, so we're flicking through, checking out alarm clocks, as you do. But the real goal was to get to the back, where it has the games Sega Master System, Mega Drive, and Game Gear. Check out the price. Now I'm a man, I can afford a Game Gear. That's what you think. This one is the Game Gear Micro, which you can find on Amazon and a few other retailers for around $50. As I am a total cheapskate, I got this used from Yahoo Auction. Comes with four games, you can see them on the back Sonic the Hedgehog, Pio Pio, Outrun, and some thing. The size is incredibly small. She said it was cute. The box is double the length of a Roy Bosch tea bag, and also double the height. Let's have a look inside. We have the manual. The console is in an egg carton. And wow, look at this. It's so freaking cute. <sighs> this is the official Sega product. It's not a knockoff. And so far it looks pretty decent. The D-pad itself doesn't feel that great. Feels like there's a frisbee on a nipple. Never tried the... And the buttons feel a bit like Palmer Violets. Yummy yum yum. Along the top we can adjust the volume, headphone jack, micro USB port, and the on and off switch. Around the back we have a battery compartment where we can fit in some triple A's. Once they're in, they're quite difficult to get back out. Would have been nice if they have added the ribbon so we can just pull on it and you remember back in the day. Batteries in. Engage. You stole my catchphrase. Give me your lunch money or I will get clinging on you. Seriously. I am very angry. Just over 13 seconds to boot up to the main menu. And then we've got this little GUI. You can select from one of four games. Sonic, Puyo Puyo, Outrun, and Royal Stone. We push this cog at the top, we have some options. I guess you can call them options. Staff credits. Very nice. The second option is... Yeah, more credits. Or the tools emulators used. Lovely. Third option is reset to factory settings. This will basically remove all save games. Just have to hold the number two down. And it's done. The last option is return to main menu. Before we try some gameplay, I'm going to quickly check the manual. Ooh, it's been a while since we've seen pictures like these in manuals. And this one's full of them. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. Which batteries to use, things like that. Where the buttons are. Also how to save and load states. Testing outside, there's a bit of glare from the screen, but the display itself is quite bright. Here's some gameplay. Bit distorted. This game really needs no introduction. It's Sonic the Hedgehog. We can get to the in-game menu by holding the start button. And this is where we can save, 
Load. Change the brightness. By lowering this, we can extend battery life. There are two save slots per game that we can choose from. And the button on the very right exits to the game menu. Now for a bit of Puyo Puyo. Puyo Puyo is a game that's very similar to Tetris or Columns, where you match colours of your bean together. This was skinned and resold as Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine on the Sega Mega Drive. In Japan, a very popular game. While Puyo Puyo is an excellent game, the screen is way too small to see what's going on. Look, the screen is the size of my thumb. Let's change to Outrun. This game is one of my favourites on the Mega Drive or the Arcade. And it's not a bad port. Now this game suits the size of the screen. Works really well. Now for the last game, Royal Stone. So this seems to be an RPG, much like Final Fantasy. And the screen is just so tiny. It's very difficult to read, especially if you don't understand Japanese. Let's open this up. There's only four screws on the back. And then we can pull it apart. Actually, I'm not going to bother. The screen's attached. If we check the interwebs, Team Mupung has created a custom firmware. Unfortunately, there is no link in the YouTube video. So what we can do is find the Korean title of the video, copy and paste it into Google, followed by CFW, and then we can find the files. Then install the CFW. You'll need a reliable USB to micro USB cable. Stick it in. Then insert the USB end into the back of your PC. There is a tiny button inside the battery compartment. You need to push it in with a pin. I like that. And the installation should continue. You'll also have the option to back up your firmware if in the future you wish to restore it. Once this has installed, we can press on slot update. Throughout the whole process, you are held by the hand. You'll get the security alert from Putty. Just hit yes. This will give your computer access to your handheld. On this screen, we can change out the games. Each of these slots is a separate game menu, a maximum of six games each. Holding down one of these buttons while turning on your handheld will give you access to that set of games. So let's start by filling up slot one. Click this button. At the top we can change graphics. On the right we can save and load the game lists. Now we're going to click on each one of these ROM buttons on the left and add the Game Gear ROMs. They need to be .gg, but if you have a .zip file you need to extract it first. We're going to use Greenshot here to capture region. It'd be great if they supplied templates for these. I'm just going to make my own. I hope this works. We'll just add a graphic for each box. We'll use Greenshot to capture this part of the screen and then paste it into these boxes. And resize it, repeat five times, and then save as a PNG file. This handheld needs incredibly small file sizes. So in the next menu, make sure this settings reduce colors is selected. Press on slot one update, and this will send the games into your Game Gear Micro. Once complete, we can close the software. Let's test it out. Ah, crap. We can see it's not quite aligned. So we hope in the future they add some templates so it's easier to do. What well, we can select each box, I guess. <laughs> with a bit more time messing with the graphics, we can fix that. What is nice to see are the custom games. Sensible Soccer.
Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage 2. You can tell that the volume is all over the place. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Sega 4-in-1. It's a quiet one again. We can still hold the start button to get to the in-game menu. And for the final game, Micro Machines? Game Gear says no. So, what do we think about the Game Gear Micro? This is a novelty slash collector's item. Would look great on a shelf, and it's so tiny that it's the same size as a Game Boy screen. If you want to play the games comfortably, look elsewhere. But if you want something so small that it'd fit into your wallet, this is a great device to sneak into work for your toilet breaks. And finally, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's helping us on Patreon. Our main focus is on fixing Pandora box machines, but it's always nice to see what the market can bring with these funky little doodars. This has been Emi Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!